Greetings, YouTube. Last weekend, my wife and I saw the second portion of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. And this is going to be more of a just pondering the film than an actual review, and yes, it will contain spoilers. Now, I wasn't really impressed by the first portion of the movie, The Hobbit. It was pretty, and I enjoyed some of the characters. Um, but there was too much silliness and I didn't think it was all that engaging. I just didn't really care about the people in the film. Well, the second one, people told me, well, it was much more action-paced, you know, and it was faster editing and things like that. And My wife really wanted to see it. She loves Hobbits, so she really wanted to go see it. And it was nice to see Hobbit, a Hobbit, and uh, orcs, and elves, and dwarves, and smog was awesome. Let me say that right up front. Smog was awesome. But I didn't care about anybody in this movie. Not even a little bit. Not even a sconch did I care about any of them. See, I've seen the first three Lord of the Rings movies that have come out by, put out by Steve, uh, Peter Jackson. So I know all the characters that are in The Hobbit that are going to live into the next, into, into those movies. I wasn't shocked that Ben Kenobi didn't die in the first three Star Wars movies. And there's a lot much, a lot less engaging aspects of this than there were in Star Wars. And the silliness in this film was just unbelievable. I mean, in the first you had the silly goblin log thing that was just dumb. But this you have multiple episodes in the film. Where there's more amusement park rides. The elves are the ultimate Mary Sue's. They are perfect. In fact, there's one scene where Legolas gets pissed off because someone gives him a bloody nose. Everything they do is perfect. Every bow shot, every blow, everything. It's it's an orc murder simulator. You just can sit back and watch orcs die. Oh, and the orcs? Orcs are not ninjas. Orcs cannot creep over the roofs of buildings silently like a fog. That's not how orcs work. Orcs storm places. They ride wargs. Uh, it was unbelievable. And of course, when it's convenient, orcs fall through roofs like they're made out of lead. I didn't feel any engagement. And then they talk about the, the, the black arrow being able to slay the dragon. Except, the black arrow was supposed to be an arrow. A bow and arrow. And a guy with a bow and arrow has a much better chance of shooting a moving target than some poor schmuck who's got to stand there with an artillery piece trying to hit a moving target. And what? It, it wasn't difficult enough to hit a dragon's scale? You had to have it now, the guy had to be stationary with himself handcuffed to the device? I'm sorry, but the silliness in this movie, I mean, Legolas is standing on the heads of two dwarves who are in barrels, going down a raging river, it's got to be a class 3 rapid, and he's shooting a bow. That's taking the silliness to 11, snapping the knob off, throwing it away, and smashing the amp with the hammer. And I still didn't care about anybody in this movie. Now, the female elf, I have no idea it happens to her. They'll probably kill her off. And the dwarves, since I didn't read The Hobbit, I tried. Um, I couldn't read any of Tolkien. I couldn't get through his prose. It, it, it was like trying to butt my head against a brick wall. I had a friend once tell me that said, if you like Eddings, you don't like Tolkien. If you like Tolkien, you don't like Eddings. And I enjoyed Eddings. So, maybe that says something. But... It was just too, too silly. And I know the characters don't die. The dwarves, again, I don't know if they live or die. But so far they haven't. So far they've been invulnerable. Doing the most absurd things. Being put through situations that would kill anybody. But, yeah, they're fine. Because you know they're going to survive. At least until the third movie. And we know the main characters that are in the first three Lord of the Rings movies are all going to survive through this series of films. 
So they're all invulnerable. Well, you know, one of them loses a finger. Woo! So I'm just... I was just absolutely flabbergasted at this. And not, the, not excitement, I can tell you that. Because I was bored silly the entire time. I watched it. I enjoyed the visuals. Um, boats don't move the way boats are shown to move in this film. You can't move a boat with a little tiny paddle that big. Doesn't work that way. You can steer a boat, but you can't move one. And the sails weren't up. Uh, just things like that. It just wasn't good. Maybe my standards are too high, because I really enjoyed the first Lord of the Ring movies. I really did. I had a good time. I, I, got, I got into it. Even even the parts that were silly, I was able to look overlook that because so much of the films were good. So far, The Hobbit has not been good, so I can't ignore the silly. And the silly just keeps getting higher and higher. I'm, I have no idea how they're going to make the third film be watchable. I really don't. Flat out, how do you do that? I mean, Smog's about to attack a city. Shouldn't he just kill Smog? He's got the launcher. He's got the black arrow. Oh, that's right. He's in a cell. So now we have to have some BS storyline where he has to get out so he can do his job. But how do you save the city from the dragon when the guy, only guy that can kill him in the entire place is in a cell? Dwarves can't help him. They're at the mountain. Oh, yes, as an aside, that much gold would take weeks to melt. Even with magic. Magic's supposed to be subtle for the most part in The Lord of the Rings. It's not supposed to be overt. It's not supposed to be fireballs and lightning bolts and shape-shifting spells. Though there was a cool shapeshifter and there's a skinwalker. That was very well. That was interesting at least. I enjoyed that character. I have a penchant for uh, werebears. So I was just I was not impressed with this movie. I, I will go see the third one because my wife really likes Hobbits. And I will probably enjoy the visuals again. And Smog will be fun to watch until he dies. And all the characters I know who are going to survive are going to survive. And the few characters that I don't know will be a bit of a mystery for me until the end of the movie. And I still probably won't care about any of them. Oh, and the one love interest in this, where you have a dwarf falling for an elf, or an elf falling for a dwarf, they fall in love with each other, or are in the process of falling in love with each other, after having been in each other's company about 20 minutes. I don't know about you folks, it took me a little bit longer to fall in love with my wife than 20 minutes. And I am a sucker for love at first sight. And I knew the first time I laid eyes on her, the first time I heard her speak, the first time I heard her recite poetry, that thing that she was going to be an important person in my life. But it took more than 20 minutes to decide that I actually wanted to see if I could hitch my wagon to hers in this journey in life. But not this dwarf and elf. Nope. 20 minutes. We're in love. Maybe life's short and they have to take what, what chances they can. I don't know. So tell me, what did you think about the movie? I'd be interested in knowing. Because um, so far, Peter Jackson has really let me down. 